This lesson teaches you how to use electronic mail, email, the most widely used internet tool. You will learn to compose, send, forward, receive, reply to and delete email messages. You will also learn to attach documents to messages, create email signatures and send mail to gateway addresses. Most large organizations have had proprietary internal email systems for years. Only recently, however, has the internet been available to the general public for sending email. Within an email software package, there are several standard features. This section provides information about email features, protocols and programs used to send email via the internet. Here is a table of the features found in most internet email packages. Post Office Protocol, POP, is a part of a program that resides on the server where your mail account is located. It sends and receives mail and may transfer mail between the server and your computer. There are different versions of POP, not all of which are compatible. With POP, users connect to the host computer only to check for new mail, download new mail or upload outgoing mail. Therefore, most internet service providers and organizational local area networks that provide email services use POP because it can greatly reduce the strain on mail servers. Email users can read, reply to, compose, delete and transfer mail without being logged in. Pine is a Unix-based menu-driven email program. Pine initially offered a limited set of functions geared towards the novice user. Recent versions include optional power user and personal preference features. Pine is one of the most popular Unix email packages. Users of graphical based mail applications like Qualcomm Corporation's Edura or Spry Corporation's Airmail will find Pine limiting and difficult to use. This is because many users prefer to work with a graphical user interface rather than in a character based environment. Eudora from Qualcomm Corporation is one of the most popular graphical user interface email packages for the Internet. There are other commercially available products that include graphical user interface email packages. Eudora offers many features not available in character based email applications. Personalized folders or mailboxes can easily be created, moved, renamed or deleted. These mailboxes serve to efficiently organize your incoming mail and are especially helpful if you receive a large quantity of mail each day and wish to store it by category. Eudora can also be extensively customized. For example, users can decide if they want to be alerted when new messages arrive, automatically purge their trash upon exiting, leave a copy of the download mail on the server or Take advantage of many other user-definable features. Eudora also comes in a shareware version, which can be found at many popular FTP locations on the Internet. An email client has been included as a part of Netscape releases 2.x and later versions. This email client includes many of the features of graphical email tools. Because of its software links to the Netscape Navigator browser, Hyperlinks and graphics can be included in email messages. Other email clients such as Eudora Pro, Lotus CC Mail, Microsoft Outlook, Net Messenger and QuickMail Pro also accept messages with these special capabilities. But this is still a relatively new trend and not used in many of the older clients. When using a graphical application for email, you must configure the software by providing it with the following. Your email address. The name of the host computer on which you have your email account. Your return address, which can differ from the email address from which you are sending the mail. Your real name, that is optional. The first step in working with email is to compose the message you wish to send. Part of this step involves providing the address of the recipient or recipients and indicating the message subject. The message subject is far more important than is considered by most people as some people receive an excessive number of mail messages per day. Users need to carefully select which messages they will read immediately, which they will read later, which to save, and possibly which to delete without reading. 
Hence, you should make sure that your subject reflects the content of your message. What you see here is the main components of an email message window belonging to Netscape Messenger. Each component of this email message window is described in the table. Many internet users take advantage of the capability of composing and reading email while offline. This allows composing email to be separated from sending, uploading email. Similarly, receiving, downloading email is separated from reading email. Messenger, like most email packages, has a reply feature and a forwarding feature. Some email messages you send may be in response to messages you have received. You can use Messenger's reply feature for such responses. Messenger gives you the option of replying just to the sender or to the sender as well as all the recipients of the message. Replying to all recipients can be helpful when a message has been sent to a group of people. When you respond, your reply is sent to all the people who received the original mail. The forward function is useful when you receive email which has been misdirected to you or you receive mail that you would like to send to someone else. Forwarding allows you to keep the message intact, add an optional note for the person you are forwarding it to and send the message on its way. It is important to purge or delete received messages that are no longer important. Although email messages which are in the form of standard text files are typically very small, they can quickly consume disk space. Sometimes errors can occur when sending email. Undelivered mail is referred to as bounced and can occur for many different reasons. One of the most common reasons is that it has been sent to a non-existent email address. If even a single character is entered incorrectly when typing an email address, the mail will not go to the intended destination. If the mail you send bounces, you will receive a message from an internet mail server indicating that the message could not be delivered. Often returned mail messages will indicate recipient unknown or host unknown. This problem could, however, be caused by a user's mail server being down when the mail delivery was attempted. If so, simply resend the mail after checking the address. Attachments are files that can be included with email messages. These files are not limited to text only. They may be database files, spreadsheet files, graphical images, sound files or business presentation files. Essentially, you can attach any file type. Not all network systems or email packages allow attachments, so do not assume that attached files will always be delivered. Even if attachments can be delivered, recipients must have application programs on their own computers capable of displaying the file type sent. If the recipient does not have the same application that created the original file, he should at least have the required software to import or convert the file to a format he can use. An email inquiry to the intended recipient or recipients prior to sending an attachment is a good way to prevent attaching unreadable files. An email signature is automatically appended to the end of your email message when it is sent. A signature can contain any information you wish. Typical signature information includes, but is not limited to, job title, company name and address, phone number and fax number, a personal quote, a company mission statement or a brief description of services or products offered. Organizations with an internet connection may be able to interface their internal email system with internet email. Most popular commercial email programs like Microsoft Mail and CC Mail requires special software to interface with internet email. This software allows mail to be sent to the internet from within their email program. The only requirement is that the user must know the internet email address of the recipient of the message. Simple Mail Transfer Protocol or SMTP is the protocol on the internet for transporting messages from one email system to another. Another protocol, Post Office Protocol, POP, allows internet users to retrieve their mail from the mail server. Newer protocols are emerging that are enhancing internet messaging. Members of online services can receive and send mail between their own network and the internet via a gateway. A gateway joins networks that use different communications protocols. 
When sending email from the internet to a gateway, addressing often becomes confusing because not all gateways work the same. To send an email to someone on an online service, you must know his or her email address. Online services do not have an IP address or email name that complies with the internet domain name system. Each online service has a gateway domain name that is part of the email address you use to send messages. For example, someone who uses America Online might have an email address such as BOB515. If you attempt to send internet email to this address, the gateway will not be able to locate the account because the address does not follow the correct format of the domain name system. You must know the domain name of the online service where the intended recipient has his or her email account. For example, America Online has the domain name AOL.com, so the proper and complete email address would be BOB515 at the rate of AOL.com. Address formats for popular online services are listed here. There is a typical pattern of behavior that internet users normally follow known as network etiquette or netiquette. Understanding the guidelines governing this behavior will help you avoid insulting or offending other users. In general, when composing email messages or newsgroup postings, you should Be aware of who your reader may be. Are you sending a personal message? Are you posting a message to thousands of people? Will the reader be interested in what you have to say? What type of social background does the reader have? Spend some time reading messages which others have written before you write your own. Do not use all caps. This is referred to as shouting. Respect others' privacy. Be considerate of network resources. There are many more rules that you will learn from experience. When speaking to another person directly, Communication cues which guide behavior in different situations can include anything from the content of what is said to a person's tone of voice or body language. Currently, communication over the internet allows exchange of message content only. It is lacking in social cues. You cannot see the person sending the message, so its meaning may be changed to something less or something different. Because of the proliferation of text messages on the internet, Emoticons were developed to help express emotion. Without these emoticons, the reader of a message could easily misinterpret the intent of a letter. One popular emoticon is the smiley face. If you can't see the face, turn your head sideways to the left. Here are some of the other emoticons. People communicate and interact differently. Blunt remarks, ignoring of social boundaries, inadvertent revelation of personal information. Insults and alienation all become common over computer networks. A phenomenon attributed to the emotional detachment of text is flaming. Flaming, which typically occurs in news groups and other discussion forums, is when someone makes a rude or otherwise unjustified attack on another. A flame war occurs when two or more people continue to rudely argue with each other. Spamming is when a user sends unwanted mass mailing to many different news groups or email accounts at the same time. The green card spam indulged in by lawyers Lawrence Cantor and Martha Siegel is probably the most notable spam to date, where they posted an advertisement which promoted their services to thousands of Usenet newsgroups at the same time.